Baker has been nothing but a uh, professional since he's been here, a complete pro. Uh, tremendous respect for him. Uh, as he and I had a conversation, uh, I talked about you know my decision uh, at the time uh, to go to Cleveland uh, was all based off uh, him and their offense and having an opportunity to be you know with a product productive team that I felt that could move the ball uh, and you know this is a you know a tough business uh, and sitting in this seat you know it's a tough decision on my part but uh, it was something that I felt like uh, was the best move for the team moving forward. Steve Wilkes, interim coach of the Carolina Panthers, during their bye week, they didn't play on Sunday, day after, Baker Mayfield is released. He asked to be released, and he was. He wasn't playing. Sam Donald had taken over as the starter. P.J. Walker had been the starter until he got injured. Donald has played pretty well. Panthers have to make some decisions about the future, and they had made the decision Baker Mayfield wasn't going to be part of their future. So if someone claims his contract, they're going to save about $1.3 million, which isn't a ton of money in today's NFL, but it's a little something. They get a little something in return. That's it, though. It's too late to trade Baker Mayfield. So he gets out, and now he goes through the waiver process. Chris, and this was unexpected, although it's one of those things where I'm surprised, but then when I sit and think about it, it's like it's not really surprising. I'm surprised the Panthers let him go, I, but I, yeah, I, I'm not surprised he'd want out, but he asked, and it just goes to show, kids, there's no harm in asking. They can <laughs> say no, but there's a chance they'll say yes, and the Panthers said yes. Now the problem is Baker Mayfield's got to sweat it out until 4 o'clock Eastern today to see which of the teams out there puts in the waiver claim and which of those teams has the highest priority because where he goes next, it's not going to be his choice. And you can't continue to say, will you please release me, until you get released and claimed on waivers by somebody you actually want to play for. Yeah, no, it's, it's going to be interesting. It is a little bit – it is fascinating. You know, what, what led Baker, Baker Mayfield to be asked to be released – you know, yeah, you know, Carolina, I can, you know, understand them. I give them credit for going, wait, you know, Sam Darnold, we got PJ Walker, you know, Baker, you, we know you kind of got screwed over by your last team. You know, there is no future here between us. That's cool of them to, to let them go. It is, you know, I, I will say, and, and people here at NBC will vouch for me. I just, I do find it coincidental too. I do. I was sitting here Sunday night in the back viewing room during the game, kind of yelling, going, man, who's a team that's got a third quarterback where the third quarterback could, you know, weasel his way out of town or get off the team? And then well, maybe that's not how I remember it. I remember it saying they should call Carolina and see if they wanted to trade one of those quarterbacks. And I had to remind you the trade deadline passed five weeks ago. That's how I remember. It. Well, yeah, I, I, I might have right church wrong pew. Well, I might have said that earlier, earlier on in the okay. day. You're right. I, I'm not denying that I didn't say it. And I went, oh, duh, that was stupid. <laughs> right. I, it's stupid. I think I even might have said that yesterday. But either way. Yeah. As I my thought was there. Uh, thank you for at least confirming my point of going. Yes. Oh, wait, it definitely was there. That You're where the first guy I thought of. When I saw he was retired, I said Sims was talking about the Carolina quarterbacks yesterday. I just thought of who's who's got that third guy that could kind of finagle his way out out of town there. And so that's where I found it coincidental. And then, yeah, now the waiver thing I think is interesting as well. You know, this is an interesting conversation there to be had. You know, one, like some of the teams that are not very good, they're going to be at top of the waiver list here. Are they going to really want to – what's the point of picking up Baker Mayfield right now? I don't know if they're here's really – Here's the point. Here right? it is. Here's yeah. why. Right. And this, this dawned on me last night. Yeah. I was talking to my son or my nephew about this. I think I was talking to my nephew about this. And it's like the more you talk about football, the more ideas you eventually get into your head. That's the best way – to let your brain, because you're having a conversation. It's like what we do. That's why I enjoy this show so much. We talk about stuff. It's like, I hadn't thought about that before. If you are in the process of mapping out your free agency planning for next year, and if Baker Mayfield is on your list of guys that you may have been interested in, in any capacity, why not bring him in for $1.3 million for five weeks? You get to be around him. You get to see him at practice, even if he's not going to be ready to play. you got five weeks with him. Then you have exclusive negotiating rights with him until free agency begins. If he was a guy you were thinking about anyway, why wouldn't you bring him in now? The only wrinkle is you don't want to upset the apple cart internally, but you're bringing him in as a backup. You bring him as number three guy. You go to your starter and say, he's not playing this year. We're just taking a look at him. You know, the, the old Rick Spielman adage 
Because remember when Josh Freeman got cut by the Bucks in 2013 and the Vikings signed him? It was like, why are you saying you got a quarterback? What are you doing here? But they, they really didn't at the time. But the point was, when you have an opportunity to potentially get a franchise quarterback, you don't say no. You take advantage of the opportunity. And you evaluate him. You see what you have. And if it works out, great. And if it doesn't, it didn't. Well, you move on to the next potential franchise quarterback. So I just think if there's teams out there, Chris, that had their eye on Baker Mayfield, this is a relatively cheap opportunity to to lease before you buy. All right, so so there's only two teams that fit that mold of what you're talking about that could even that that can even think about that. At least in my opinion, you know, I mean, hey, the Rams could bring him in, but there's no future, and we know they could maybe use him for right now. Right, but after that, you get into the conversation, and the only teams that make sense from what, what we're, we're discussing here are the Houston Texans and the Indianapolis Colts. Those are the only two, and I think both mm -hmm. of them are kind of like we know Houston had a chance to get Baker Mayfield already, so they passed on that. I think both teams are looking for a quarterback of the future. Indianapolis, are they really going to go and try to sell to their fan base? Hey, we're going to try. Another team's trash for the third year in a row. As do you think that's going to work as a sale? The, the, so that's where I I don't know where that team is. I think your thought is right, Mike. I'm not trying to even argue that. I'm with you. But I, that's where I just got down to. I was like, well, I don't know if there's teams that fit that mold. Even though what you're saying is totally logical. If there was more teams that I think fit that mold, but unfortunately, some of the teams that are down the list and up high on the waiver wire, they already have their future kind of in hold or. You know, it just doesn't make sense all the way there. So that's where it's interesting too, Mike. And let me just add one more thing onto this okay. too. Just with like, you know, the other part of it is, okay, if you're one of those teams, you want to take a chance like you're saying, which I'm saying there's, there's definitely logic. I'm with you there. But at the same time too, I mean, if you're one of these teams that fighting for a spot with the 49ers – you know, which which I was like we're at first, like oh, I mean, ooh, I don't know if I'm one of these times. Would would I want to claim them just so they can't have them or or go down that you know road at some point here? And I found that to be interesting too. But you know, I'll be interested to see where what happens today okay. is when the waiver wire comes out. So there's three categories. Yeah, here, yeah. As I see it, team that would want him in order to play him right now or pretty damn soon. Right. Two, team that would want him to evaluate him for the future. Is this a guy we would want to try to re-sign and let compete for the starting job or be the starter next year? Category three, team that is trying to prevent someone else from getting Baker Mayfield. Right. Those are the three categories. That's a good way to let put it. Let me go back to yeah. category number two. You mentioned the Colts, and this is one of the – added benefits of having this show where we have this platform where we can talk about whatever I had forgotten. Remember that podcast where the dog was like rolling all over the place. Yeah. On the white couch. Right. Like, he said Colts at first. Couch. Remember? Colts. Right. Until Matt Ryan fell out of the sky right. into their laps. The Colts was where he thought he was going to go. Chris Ballard is still there as the general manager of the Colts. And I think Baker Mayfield knew that of which he was speaking at the time he said the Colts. So I would watch the Colts. I mean, they're trying to figure out what they're going to do now. Matt Ryan, they've got that $17 million injury guarantee that was an issue until it wasn't. And I know Jim Ursay is kind of throwing caution to the wind here because he wants to give Jeff Saturday all the power and all the options that he has and all the resources available. I knew I'd get to the right word eventually to try to prove that he can be the head coach. If he wants Baker Mayfield, Jim Ursay is not going to say no. So I'm, I'm, that's more of a com combination short term and maybe next year. Here's one to watch. And I had a general manager raise this one with me last night. And I'd been trying to get away from it because there was a point during the offseason where I was trying to speak this one into existence. But who drafted Baker Mayfield, Chris? Who drafted him? Cleveland. Who drafted him in Cleveland? John Dorsey. Where is John Dorsey right now? Oh, John Dorsey is. I'm choking under this right now. Where Where the heck is he right now? Where is Detroit. he? Detroit. He's Detroit. He's mm. in Detroit. Mm. That's interesting. So... Here are the line now. From the Lions' standpoint, we got something pretty good going. Yeah, that's Jared that's where it's risky. Playing well, right, right. You 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 you're, you're welcoming. You're throwing a wrench into your own gears potentially, right? If you bring Baker Mayfield in, because then you got Jared Goff thinking, "What the hell's going exactly on here? We're right. in a playoff run right. right now." Yeah, that, but 
But I, I have at least one prediction from a GM that the Lions will be a team that puts in a waiver claim. And they're, they're, they're middle of the pack. They could get them before the 49ers. They could get them before the Seahawks because you mentioned the possibility of like a team like the Seahawks saying we're going we're going to take them. So, so the 49ers can't. But watch the Lions, and that's what's going to be interesting here. They used to publicize the full list of waiver claims. Now they don't, but someone will inevitably leak it, especially for a big one like this. We'll hear every team that put in the waiver claim. Obviously, we'll know who gets him. But after that, we'll hear every team that put in a claim. And I wouldn't be surprised if the Lions at least consider it. And if they do it, it won't shock me. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I, we, they got to dance that fine line. That, that, I guess I would be surprised, too, because I feel like they finally have turned the corner with Jared Goff. It's the first time in the history of the Jared Goff-Lions organization marriage here. And really the first time I will ever say, even with Jared Goff in general, I don't even care that he was went to the Super Bowl with the Rams, where I went – he actually might be the option for them next year. Like he's, I think he's playing the best year of his career. And I know statistically it's not that I get that, but Mike, you've heard me make the point, you know, he's making plays himself. Now he's aggressive. He's throwing the ball in the tight windows, you know, back in the Rams day, it was everything we can do to make it easy. And so he didn't have to do anything through a football game. You know, he got backed into a corner here. Detroit had a fight for his career. I think Dan Campbell and them and Mark Brunel, his quarterback coach, have pushed him to, hey, no, you got to make this throw. You got to do this right here. And we're seeing a different guy right now who's playing really well. So that's where if you're thinking about him as the future, that's where, to your point, that would get dicey and confuse things. And I would think, you know, knock things off kilter a little bit if you bring Baker Mayfield into town. Because the one thing with Baker Mayfield, you know, and, and I like him and I still think he's got starting quarterback potential here, is the fact that when he is one of those guys when he comes to town that, hey, he's, you know, Johnny Progressive commercial guy. He's a, he's a star. So people are always, when are you going to get him in? When are you going to get him in? Is he going to play? Is he going to play? Baker, 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 Baker. And it overtakes your team that way. And I think that's why... You know, not to change the point, but just to throw it in here as far as the conversation, why the 49ers probably don't want to get involved in the Baker Mayfield conversation right now because they're going, we got something good. We don't need the locker room to be overtaken by when's Baker going to be in, when's Baker going to be in, and having to deal with that. And I, that's why I don't expect them to be on the waiver or claiming them on the waivers today. Hi, it's Mike Florio. Thanks for watching PFT on YouTube. Hit subscribe for the latest news and analysis from Pro Football Talk.